Hello learners, hope you are keeping well. Uh, today we're going to look at settlement geography, uh, rural settlements, and let me get it on a larger picture so we can go on. Okay, let's get going on rural settlements. Let's look at the uh, first slide. And obviously, when we look at the first slide, we must look at the curriculum, which is so, so, so important to us because we need to follow and see whether we complete it. All right. And if you look at the curriculum and what is stated here, you will notice that the first thing we have to look at how site and situation affect the location of rural settlements. Then we look at the classification of rural settlements according to pattern and function. Then we look at reasons for the different shapes in the rural settlement. And we're going to look at round, linear, crossroads, T-shape and stellar shapes, all right? And lastly, we look at the rural land use or the land use in rural settlements, okay? That's basically what we're going to look at under rural settlements, all right? Let's start off then. Look at the definition. Now, what you notice immediately that there's quite an overlap between study of settlements and rural settlements. The only difference is that we actually take these concepts and now make it specific to rural settlements. So once again, we look at the word site and we said it's the actual location of a settlement on the earth. All right. In this case, we're looking at the rural settlement and it includes the physical characteristics of the landscape of that specific area, meaning that those factors have to be taken into consideration, all right? In the sense that if you want to put up a farm, you will then look at factors like flat land, as indicated here, fertile land which is near the river so we can make the assumption that it's fertile so you can grow your crops you look at river which is around here for water supply and you look at forests some of the factors here that will allow you to have building materials etc to build various buildings in your area your barn whatever Okay, so these are factors that are situated on the land where the settlement is. All right, so let's look at another one. Let's look at this. All right, a picture now where we would look at uh, what is found on this area. Okay, so I look clearly, you can see that it's flat land on which this settlement is, rural settlement is situated. Okay, we can pick up another factor here. There's a river, so water supply. Obviously, we assume near the river there'll be uh, fertile sediments which will make the land fertile. And in this case, we also have a river that is flowing through the area, which uh, uh, river, and then of course a road. Now, road can be situation or site. This road is on the site. So it can be a site factor. Okay, just another picture. Okay, let's then look at our next slide. So the factors that influence site, site would be various things, drinkable water, availability, or water for farming or agricultural activities, available of building materials, which is also significant in the sense that we have trees, we can build our different buildings, as I said, our barn, arable land that's available to farm on, pasturage for livestock so they can feed on the grass, etc. It must be available if you're doing livestock farming, 
few in some cases for warmth and cooking depending on the type of farming all right sometimes subsistence farmers etc will put their farms near trees which they can you cut down and use for cooking and warmth soil quality in terms of your fertile soil etc which are found in areas relief meaning your land if it's flat you can farm easier than steep areas and of course drainage in many cases you don't want waterlogged uh, land in the sense that with waterlogged land you can't plant various crops so you nice good drainage that allow you to plant and as i mentioned transport routes if it is found on the site all right uh, i've mentioned relief again i think i like relief so we've got it there and of course there's other factors i just included religion okay in some places you find people of the same religion tend to be together you understand so there's various cultural factors that can also influence uh, the site of a situation of, of, an, of a rural settlement all right then let's look at situation it is the location of a place relative to its surroundings and other places so let's just take an example of a farmer the farmer decides he wants to put his farm there there's various side factors that would allow him to farm properly so he's happy but if he's a commercial farmer and he wants to sell he also needs to look at the situation is there a market available is there transport routes that lead out you understand things like that so he has to look at that if there's no transport routes and he's a major commercial farmer in this case yeah you look at there's many areas of the farming going on so he has to supply if there's no proper transport routes he's going to have problems if there's no market for his products he's going to have problems so let's look at this picture it's not very clear in the end there but there's around a town in that area okay and you look at transport routes that go and lead to the town so it's linking this is a situation factor it's outside the site and leading towards the town which is a market for this farmer to sell his products so those are situation factors okay let's go on and my slide is not changing so some of the situation factors could be transport infrastructure leading out to the road railway etc that leads availability of market even stuff like physical barriers you know around his farm okay there could be mountains etc that will protect him from the winds may not be on the site but it will help him with protecting him from strong weather conditions etc okay so let's go on then we have two more points in terms of looking at the where the farms would be or rural settlements rather would be situated and of course the first one we look at is a wet point settlement these settlements are close to the water supply if you look at it here can you see it all these rural settlements are close to this water supply all right generally the area has limited water supply so they will be closer can you see this area not much water supply at all so these farms or these settlements i like to use the word rural settlements I don't know why, maybe in the past generation I was a farmer, so maybe I'm using that word often, but rural settlements go around a water source with limited uh, water available. All right, let's look at the next one, a dry point settlement. These settlements avoid risk of flooding. Generally, there is a large amount of water supply. There's no real shortage. All right, so what happens here is if you look at this river, okay, it could stand a chance of flooding. So what happens? The settlement is situated 
away or on higher ground. In this case, if you look at it's both. So your settlement can be here if the ground was higher. So it can be away from there on higher ground. Look at this settlement. It's not that high, but it's away from the river. So dry point settlement when you have larger amount of water availability and it's away from the water source. So watch for these two concepts. We tend to mix them up. Wet points, some people just read the name and assume there's a lot of water, but actually it's limited water. So it's close to the water source and dry point settlement actually has a lot of water and it's away from the water source. Okay. Let's look at another one that you've done under study of settlements. Nucleated pattern. Okay. Yeah, the building are close together. Remember, farms may be big, but they meet at a point. That's not the issue about nucleation. Nucleation deals with the buildings being close together. Is that clear? The buildings itself. Okay, nucleated pattern. And these are patterns. Advantages of nucleated pattern. All right, there's more contact and socializing. There's many people around you. You can chat, you have company, etc. Safety and security as people are nearby. So it's much safer. You can share ideas regarding activities like farming methods. You have people there in terms of direct, physical or verbal. You speak to people right down there. Okay. You share costs in terms of sometimes buying farming equipment. So your initial cost can be cheaper. There are more facilities. It's more profitable to establish services near nucleated settlements. What do I mean by this? If you want to build shops to sell groceries and whatever, would you put it next to an isolated farm? No. Because that's only one farm. You'll put it next to a, a nucleated settlement like I showed you now with so many uh, houses, etc. in that rural settlement. So you'll have a large customer base. And obviously, the isolated farmers have to travel there. So more facilities available around. More people immediately available for emergencies. Suddenly you get very sick. There are people around. If you're living alone, obviously there's people around that can help you. The disadvantages now, in case of communal farming where you're farming together, you show showing initiative and independent decision is limited. You can't just have your own way. You may have ideas, but you have to discuss it with the rest of this settlement where it is nucleated. Farming, if you're farming on your own, the plots are generally small. Therefore, machinery is limited. That means your output will be less. You have to rely more on manual labor. You can't produce fast with machinery. Limited use of new farming methods with technology and machinery coming out, making farming easier. Unfortunately, you are limited in the usage of this. Therefore, you're limited in new farming methods. Machinery, if, if is used, is generally shared, which can increase maintenance costs. Maintenance of that, because not everybody will look after it. It's not just your machinery. So that could be a problem. Small plots, if you're looking at on a commercial basis, therefore, limited economic gain. You're farming on a smaller plot. Your output is less. Therefore, you're not going to make so much money. Okay? Then, if we look at this overall, there seems to be more social advantages than economic in terms of safety and sharing of ideas and socializing. So it seems more social than economic in terms of making big profits. Okay, let's go on. Let's look at a dispersed or isolated pattern. Again, the emphasis on buildings are far apart. 
they're not close together, far apart. Okay, and if you look here, if you look at this little farmstead, it's one, there's nothing around this area, it's just one farmstead. Okay, so it's isolated. All right, can you see nothing around? So there's no buildings around there. Okay, but right, let's look at some factors on this. Advantages for isolated, generally the farm is bigger. You can show initiative and independent decision-making because the whole farm is yours generally. Okay, so you can make your decisions. Farm plots are large. Therefore, machinery can be used, meaning your outputs are huge. You understand? You produce a lot and chances of profit is being huge. All right. New farming methods can be maximized. If there's new machinery coming out involving technology, you can buy it and use it on your large farm. Machinery is not shared, reducing maintenance costs. I suppose it depends how you look after your machinery, but I suppose if it's yours, you're really going to look after it, so maintenance costs are not that high. Large plots, economic gain maximized. You can plant a lot at a fast pace using your machinery on these large plots. Therefore, your production is great, sending out a greater output making more money all right disadvantages is less contact and socializing whoa i'm getting american there now it's supposed to be an s but socializing all right you don't have many people around you you saw the farm i showed you all of them are far apart okay limited safety and security as people are not nearby that's another problem we have, okay? No people nearby. If somebody's breaking in, there's a problem, all right? Limited sharing of ideas regarding activities and farming methods, etc. Uh, in terms of direct communication. Obviously, I know now the internet is around, okay? And you can get things, but direct sharing of ideas in the area is limited. Generally responsible for all costs buying farming equipment, etc. It's not shared. You one farmer on that farm, you have to pay for it. So the initial costs of buying your machinery, etc., will be more. All right, less facilities, as I said, in terms of uh, people living near the nucleated settlements, uh, services will be more available. It's better to put up shops or whatever garage near a nucleated settlement because you've got a lot of customers. But putting a garage or a shop in on next to just one farm does not make sense, all right? Because others have to travel. So unfortunately, less facilities, these isolated farmers have to travel a distance to go and get the service from the nucleated settlements. People are not immediately available in case of emergencies. They're not nearby. And if you single, uh, you shout off, there's no one there. Okay, so you that's another problem you have. Okay, so here it seems that there's more economic advantages than social. Not there are no social, both of it have, but there's more economic advantages because your production is great, you make more money, etc. Okay, let's go on. Then the next thing in our curriculum was the shapes. All right, and Again, you've done it under study, but we're looking specifically at rural. Okay, the, there's many of them, all right, that are associated with infrastructure, okay, in terms of transport. Like, let's look at the linear. There's a road here, okay? And now we find that the farms are situated next to the road. Can you see that? And therefore, there's more farms situated next to the road. The farm could be taking a shape like this along the way. But the farmsteads are along the road, or the rural settlement is along the road. Therefore, it's considered a linear pattern. Please note in this pattern, it can be a river that's situated there where people can use it for water supply. But more people, by having a linear pattern, more people are situated along the river or road. 
Here, if you look at this road, and you look at it here, it's crossroad. All right, it's a crossroad. So, rural settlements are situated around this road, creating a cross shape pattern. All right, or crossroads pattern. Here, we have all the roads leading out in different directions. Okay, so it's creating, and settlements are situated here. So, we have a sort of like a star shape pattern. All right, and here, the road is a T junction. So when rural settlements settle along this road, it creates a T shape. Okay. In the circular pattern, there's some focal point there. Something important. In this case, it's water supply. So farmsteads will put in there, will settle around there, especially if it is a, uh, when we look at it, it's a wet point settlement so farmsteads or rural settlements situate it's also other things that they situate with like for instance uh, a church in those years was very very not that it's not important now but it was a place of communication a place of meeting a place of prayer and all the rural settlements situated around it it could be a village green where people brought their produce to come in it could be a market that where people brought remember transport was limited so people brought their stuff towards this market therefore it was more circular okay so that's your shapes remember the difference between shape and pattern eh? pattern nuclear dispersed shape linear crossroads etc remember those words very very important learners tend to mix them up okay let's look at linear again in terms of a summary farm situated along a river for water supply or transport routes for transport okay right farms are closer together so it's more like a nucleated pattern eh? Then circular around a focal point, centrally located point, like a marketplace, place of worship, village green, as I mentioned. All right, then T shape and crossroad and star shape. It's on a nodal point of communication routes. Okay. That means it could be your roads, your railway, whatever, but it's transport routes that will determine that. Then you may see this, I know it's part, part of the exam guideline fragmented, places like hamlets, which is a loose grouping of farmsteads or rural settlements, and they scattered. They don't have a real shape. So if you come across this, although it's not part of the guideline, but you've come across this fragmented is where there's no real uh, shape. It's not situated around the transport route or a pond or a market. It's just scattered around. Okay, let's go on. Now, land use refers to the function of an area of land. Okay, or the purpose for which it is, the land is used. Now, if we look at the rural areas, the largest part of the land here is for agriculture. That's the biggest in the rural areas, agriculture. All right, the land is also used for settlements, all right, buildings, etc. Okay, it's also used for transport routes. You build roads on land, railways on land. So it's also used for that. It's used for recreation. All right, horse riding, you understand, stables, golf course, hiking trails, whatever, recreation. Then we get services. All right, later on in the urban area, you'll learn about rural urban fringe. You've done that in grade nine also, where there's urban functions in the rural area. It's found on the outskirts of the urban area. So you could get sewage works, airports, Rural urban fringe, you understand it, it's an urban function, I know, but you would get some of the services in that area. Later on, you'll realize that we classify this more as an urban area, all right? And then, of course, conservation, which is uh, nature reserves, etc., that we get in this area, okay? So that is your rural 
area. Okay, let's go on. Then settlement patterns and indigenous knowledge. Okay, now we find different areas so influence and cultures and traditions also influence the type of pattern we have all right so different traditions affect settlement patterns differently okay let's look at our africa as africans all right and i think that's important we shouldn't look anywhere else we should look here first like in many of our african traditions it involves a communal system where people live together. They work as a community and there's collective ownership. It's not you own this, I own this, people own it together, which encourages unity amongst people, all right? And also results in new created settlements. As you see down here, these huts here, we even have crowds where we have the huts together you understand and people all farm in the area all right sometimes cattle is kept okay in the center all right it has a lot of value in certain traditions so generally it influences and in african traditions our traditions you understand we get more nucleated settlements all right the pattern and of course sharing of ideas unity etc just an idea about indigenous knowledge and settlement patterns right let's of course in the end go to a uh, past paper all right let's look at this this paper was on settlement patterns okay and remember once again the examiner gives you so many clues you understand on the thing he puts in letters or she puts in letters it has a purpose you understand look at them try to work them through again the heading gives you so much it emphasizes settlement patterns but i think this one could be more than just pattern itself it could be shape so let's start looking here let's look at a and you'll find if you learned your work and you're able to apply it effectively you shouldn't have a problem so what is a there seems to be a farmstead there maybe that's a barn it could be isolated all right but there's also something else here there's a river here and the height contour lines seem to be increasing in height so this also seems to be a dry point settlement lannis because it's away also on a higher point maybe not so far away from the river but a higher point so it could be isolated if that the farmstead with the barn or it could be dry point settlement let's look at b b seems to be the same lens it's away from the river all right so it could be a, a dry point settlement also it could be an isolated settlement it's one on its own let's look at other ones here c it should could be nucleated in terms of pattern and shape could be linear can you see it there? G, also linear, all right? And it also has, it's close by, could be nucleated. E, it seems to be nucleated settlement. Now, later on when you do towns, all right? And maybe this is a bit premature that I'm bringing it in, but still, nevertheless, you'll find that this is found between two hilly areas and it's found in a gap between the two. It also could be a gap settlement or gap town. Later on, you'll do that in urban settlements. OK, but I'm just giving you a preview of that. All right, let's go on. D, not following the letter of the alphabet, it's nucleated. But it's also situated close to a dam. So it could be a wet point settlement. Can you see how we're working all this out? F could be nucleated. But also if that's pattern, but if you look at shape, it's T-shaped settlement. Can you see it? Because it falls along a T-junction. 
I see if there's anything else. We've got river. We know that's cultivated land. That's farming. Remember, keys are also very important. Eh? That refers to the buildings. Always look at your keys. I was a bit naughty. I didn't look at it first. But I should look at this first because it gives me an idea of what the different things are. Okay. Now I'm set for my questions. Okay. And if I do it this way, examiners in lots of the short questions give you lots of clues beforehand. Okay, let's look at it. Give the name of give the name given to settlement A, which is located away from water. All right, as water is seen as a threat. Notice how the examiner leads you to the answer. All right, uh, says name, which can be a bit misleading but talks about the water. So when I look back at this, okay, I can't talk about a isolated pattern. He talks about the river or she talks about the river. So I have to go for dry point settlement. Can you see it? There's clues there because if we just left gender, we don't know where to write isolated pattern or Dry, uh, dry point settlement, we're not sure. This again, watch. Settlement pattern at B. Okay? Settlement pattern. And when we looked at B, we realized it was a distance away. So therefore, it is a dispersed pattern. Look at B again. It's away. It's isolated. Better answer than this, but it's also dispersed. will be accepted. Can you see it? All right, let's go on. Uh, let's look at the next one. Why settlement C is referred uh, to as a nucleated settlement. You know settlement C are the buildings close together. All right. And that's how you get it. You know what's the definition of a nucleated settlement. Buildings are grouped together or close together. Can you see it? Easy answers, learners, for these short ones. You cannot lose marks. Let's look at the next one. Evidence we need to look for suggests that Settlement D is a wet point settlement. Let's look at settlement D again. Can you see? It's near the water source. Therefore, it is a wet point settlement. All right, let's go there. Can you see it? It is located next to the water source or dam. Then give the name of settlement E. And of course, because they just mentioned name, Various things could have been accepted here. All right. You see it was between the mountains. So we had to accept gap town. All right. Or hills. We also now had to accept the word village. A nucleated settlement. And any example of a gap town. So all had to be accepted. Because of course this question was not specific. And uh, exam panels do not like to disadvantage you. So they'll give you all the options. So when you come across a question like this, look at the best answer. In this case, the best answer was a gap town, right, which you will do under urban uh, settlements. All right. So that's the you look for the best answer. But if you can't and it's too vague, any of those answers will be accepted. All right. Let's go on. Identify the factor, read the action words eh, that influenced the shape of F. And when we went back to F, we look at F. There's a road here, isn't it? it that influenced the shape. Remember, it's not pattern, it's shape. So F is definitely a T shape. Eh? So let's go back. Can you see the road network or the T junction? Describe the shape of settlement G. Can you see it? Always look at these words because it's switching from pattern, shape. Make sure the action words are highlighted when you read them. So you don't forget, hey, this is shape. Whereas another one was pattern. If you look at the shape of G, very simply, it's forming along the road. So it is a linear pattern, okay? And that's your answer, linear pattern itself. All right, so you notice this. Uh, I'm going to skip back here. And if you notice this, it's not difficult to 
answer. All right, it's about applying. Remember again, learners, all you do is you, uh, very important, when you're studying your work, you're making sense of it and you're applying it, all right, to past papers. And all of a sudden, when you do this, okay, you'll find that this is not difficult to do. Geography is not a difficult se section, but it's not just a rote learning. You have to have to apply. Uh, learners, all the best. I wish you all the best. And I know you're doing well there. All right. Uh, until our next lesson. Bye.